What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, Blues Peepers? How y'all doing? This is Jack Dapper of Jack Dapper Blues, Jack Dapper Blues Heritage, Jack Dapper Blues Radio, Jack Dapper Blues TV. Okay? I got a message for you um, this evening. I don't know where you, whatever part of the world you're in, right now it's the evening for us. And I have a message for you guys. I really, really encourage and pray that African Americans, black, aboriginals, whatever you want to term it, to, to call it that is, we have to know our heritage. If there's things we don't know, don't be afraid to learn it. A lot of people are saying learning African American history is not important. I beg to differ and I'm explaining to you why. So an article came across my desk today, my desktop that is, and I shared it on this page, this group, Jack Dapper Blues Radio Group. It's about uh, the principal or, or president of, of a college in Tennessee, right? The population of blacks is just above 7%. The population of Latinos is about 6%. So this president of this school in Tennessee, of this college in Tennessee, uh, decides. I guess with his his um, group or whoever he works with, his his administration, to host a dinner at his home. Um, one night was for the Latino students, and the other night was for the African American students. Now the issue is, he he, the setup and the night was not tasteful. Um, the decorations on the table was something of or from a cotton patch or something that has to do with cotton. Um, the food was what you, you would call stereotypical African American food. Now, let's get it, let's look. Southern cuisine is what we grew up on. Some of us still eat, some of us don't. That is not the issue. The issue is. A lot of people took offense. The, a lot of the African Americans that went to this, especially one young lady, took high offense of the menu, which was collard greens, macaroni and cheese, and things of this nature. And they definitely took offense of this cotton uh, decoration that was in the middle of the table. Rightfully so. But here's the issue. The issue is, is this guy... Ew, Oh, and before I get to the issue, let me just say, he didn't just do it to the African-American students. Excuse me. T. Dwayne Moore, what's going on, Freddie? How you doing? He did not just do it to the African-American students. The Latino students, for the Latino dinner the night before, he served tacos, which is probably what he believes is a Latino dish. So now, what is the point? And what is the actual situation here? The situation is this white man that is the principal of, or, or, or president of this university, right, which is predominantly white, attempted to do something to make the students of a lower body percentage feel comfortable by having a dinner in his home. I think that's commendable and, and, and very admirable. I think... I'm hoping I'm wrong. I don't know about this cotton situation, but at, at least for the, the menu, the Southern, I still eat what my mom, absolutely. But this is what I'm saying. It, it, I can't speak for the, the, the cotton in the middle of the table, but for the menu, I, he, he probably thought they, you know, this is what black people eat. We're having African American night. Let's honor and represent them with food that is known to come out of their diaspora, their community, their culture. I, I don't see an issue with that thought. But based on the young lady who did the social media post who was extremely offended by the menu as well as the cotton in the middle of the table, I, you know, it struck a chord why Jack Dapper Blues is important, as well as Mount Zion Memorial Fund and, and any other organization that is fighting and working to represent, not just, not, not just celebrate, not just document, but represent and edify 
black folk, white folk, and everybody in between on the culture of a people. I'll give you an example, right? There's four major, four major events that dynamically and drastically altered or shifted the African-American community, right? That shift also shifted the face of the African-American music move, excuse me, African-American community, which is the music and the art. We know there's two continents that our music and art was birthed on, Africa and America. Now we're speaking specifically about African-Americans, uh, so-called African-Americans. We're not speaking about Caribbean, uh, 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 Cari African-Caribbeans or, or black folk in any other region of the world or continent. We're speaking specifically about African-Americans, right? Our, our traditional music was birthed or cultivated in two continents, Africa and America. We brought here a ritual, a worship, a, 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 a tradition of singing while we pray, singing while we work, singing while we celebrate, things of this nature. Okay, now with that being said, four events that drastically shifted the community that also altered the traditional expression. And those events are the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, Reconstruction, Jim Crow, and the Great Migration. Right? Now, later on, not in this, not in this post, not in, in this Facebook Live, but later on, I will discuss the other three, but I would like to discuss the, la the latter one, which is the Great Migration. The Great Migration, along with the New Negro, did a lot to shift the dynamics of the black community yet again. How did they do that? This shift also shifted the face or the representation of a specific African-American community right? Because they wanted nothing to do with the antebellum South. The memories, the backwood, everything, the traditions, they wanted to leave everything there when they moved away. Not all a good majority. They were called the New Negro. There's a list of, of folk that, that is part of that quote-unquote society, the upper echelon of the African-American community, right? the elite of the African-American community, which also motivated a lot of the low to no and middle class African-Americans that migrated to desire the same thing this upper echelon did. Now in doing that, what happened? They shifted the sound of the music because they didn't, they did not want to sound like slaves, right? Slave songs. Is that a ridiculous concept? Absolutely. However, at the time a lot of things was happening, we can't, uh, we can't judge their decision. However, the result of their decision is there is a group of black folk, what do you say? We as a people need to embrace absolutely, but that's the point. This is the entire point of this. Absolutely, Freddie. The, the, that group of African Americans wanted to get rid of that part of our heritage, our culture, and our story. So in today's world, there's grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, great-nieces, blah, 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 didn't grow up identifying or even respecting certain parts of our culture and tradition. So now when you have a white person who only knows, or anybody non-black who only knows one aspect of the African-American diaspora and culture, they're going to approach you with only that one uh, uh, um, aspect that they know or recognize, leading to a young lady like this possibly being offended. I'm not saying that was her reason. What I'm saying is we have to embrace all of our heritage, good and bad, so we can edify white folks, um, Asians, non-black people. So when they're having a function 
or if they want to include our culture in the cultural celebration, right? No one is offended, no one's feelings hurt because we know ourselves, we embrace ourselves and we share with them, they share with us. Right, so this is why Jack Dapper Blues is extremely important because what we do is not only celebrate and preserve the musical aspect of the African American story, but the history of the people that the music comes from, as well as the events that shape the people. Remember, the emancipation, the reconstruction, and Jim Crow pretty much happened all at the same time. Now you have a group of black folk that are free, that are even more endangered than they were before for several reasons. We'll get into that in a later video, right? But all of these things create, shifted, and revolutionized what we call the blues, right? Because prior to that, it was called secular songs, Saw songs, etc., etc. You heard my spiel on this before. Okay, so make sure you go to Jack Dapper Blues Radio and TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Okay, we're adjusting some errors on the website, but that's okay. You can still go and, and, and subscribe to the email list so you can stay involved. If you are not a member of the Jack Dapper Blues Radio Facebook group, now is a good time to do that. Because this is where all the updates is going to be. What's going on, Dwayne? You think the important thing of this guy to remember is not to invite Hispanic students to dinner. I don't serve stereotypes. <laughs> well, that's good. You know what I'm saying? That's really good. I'm up here sweating like Danny Glover. It's hot in here. But we're getting some work done. Well, see, and this is the whole thing. What would have been a better way of handling that was to, okay, I'm inviting you to my home because we know that you're a small percentage of this university. What would you like to eat? We're not trying to be offensive. We don't want, to, you, you know, let's talk about it. What's your culture? You know, because I still love Southern food, even though mine and my family's eating regimen has changed drastically in comparison to the food we grew up on. However, some people don't eat that at all. Not even because they're ashamed, but because it, some of it is not as healthy as we thought. Now, how did our grandparents and parents and everybody survive? Because, you know, now you, you're getting me into a, 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 a different conversation, but they had remedies that was passed down for traditions. Again, there's that word, generational, tradition, heritage, our story, all this falls into the category of what people like to say the blues, right? Or the gospel, or the old Negro spirituals, or the black spirituals. It, the, the music, I have, to, I have to drive this point home. The music is just the face of the tribe, okay? All right, so y'all keep doing whatever you're doing. Keep blues and keep spiritual and keep gospeling. Keep celebrating, keep preserving. I'm going to be talking to y'all real soon. Love y'all.